Welcome to the Kingdom. I'm Chris, and this is Good Enough Gaming. Howdy folks, and welcome back to the Kingdom for a quick army showcase video. John, many of you have seen him on the channel. He's played a couple games with me up here in the kingdom. He is planning on running a, uh, a demo game of some sort at a convention, and he wants to do Hell Divers theme. So he dumped off a whole bunch of these guys and asked if I would paint them up. Finally got them done, so I wanted to show them off because I think they look pretty good. I'm a big fan of the Hell Divers game, at least most of the time. I will not deny that I haven't rage quit a few times. But here we got some hell divers, some automatons, some corpses, and some other cool stuff. So let's take a look at what we got. So while I said I do enjoy hell divers, I don't enjoy it enough to actually memorize the official names of all the mobs here. So we've got the infantry that have the the, the double blades on each hand. Painted up a few of them here. Um, the whole scheme for them was actually pretty easy. Primed in black, heavy dry brush metallic, and then paint the skulls white, the eyes red, and for the blades, just three colors, red, orange, and yellow to give it that kind of glowing fire effect. Then uh, for the base, I just used a basic texture paint and then dry brushed a, a lighter highlighter uh, over it just to give it a little bit more depth to it. But uh, they turned out pretty darn well. These are actually 3D printed, so I had to be a little careful while painting them that I didn't push too hard doing the dry brush because they would snap pretty easily. But still, there's your first melee infantry. Then moving back here, we got the core of the long range infantry, a few more of them. You can see there's a mix of the, um, the missile launchers and just the regular rifles, but exact same kind of uh, paint scheme to it. So it wasn't difficult, it was just a time consuming process, but in the end, uh, I do believe they are good enough. At the back we have, I think they're called destroyers or devastators, one of the two. They're definitely not terminators, but anyways, these ones a little trickier, first dry brushed with a gray because they're they're not just solid black and metal, they do have a gray tinge to them. And then paint the shoulder pads and little markings on the shoulders. Um, they do have a little bit of accent here and there, so I painted some of the armor panels a slightly lighter gray like you can see on the shield of the guy on the right. But uh, these guys, I think they look really good. I like the, the, the chunky um, kind of 3D printed models. They, they look really nice, they paint nice, they're sturdy. So really happy with the way these ones turned out. Then finally at the back, we have four of the attack walkers that are not complete and total ripoffs of Star Wars, but that's okay. I mean, this game borrowed so much from so many different IPs, it's unbelievable. So that's it. There are all the, um, the automatons. And uh, I don't know exactly what scenario or rule set John's using. I think he said he's using 40K, but I'm definitely gonna have to have him back to show this off, maybe with an OPR setting. And then last of all, we got ourselves a tank. Now the tank was actually FDM printed. You can see on the spikes on the front, it, it gets a little bit messy there. Uh, the rest of the models were all resin printed, but for something that big, it'd be a little trickier to do with, uh, with resin without the thing weighing a ton. But uh, some dry brushing and some accents and a little bit of uh, highlighting the panels here and there. And I think it gave it just enough depth and definition so that it still looks like that dark black metal, but it's not a solid block of just black. Now, freehanding that star was a pain. I'm terrible at freehanding, but you got to have it on there. That's such an iconic part of the model. And here we have our heroes, the defenders of Super Earth, the champions of managed democracy, the Hell Divers. Most of them I painted in that, the, you know, the, the standard black and yellow scheme. Um, they weren't too difficult. You prime them black, you do have to do some highlighting. Otherwise, the black armor just, it, it, it all blends in together. So get yourself a, a dark gray and a slightly less dark gray to highlight edges of the armor. And then the, the yellow um, highlighted accents and you've got yourself some, some good hell divers. I did want to uh, mix up the colors a bit. So some of the guys in the scout armor I did in that green and brown camo. Um, there was uh, that uh, the silver and red there. I did a couple in a blue and white that John uh, uh, specifically asked me to paint up. And also there are some of the, um, the, the hero ones that are painted in gold. You can see one in the bottom right there. And then of course, I have a couple of the medic ones. You can see in the top left there, I did a guy with that green and the white. So there's a good mix here of, high, of hell divers with small arms, heavy weapons, some carrying the flag of Super Earth, 
Um, some just in, you know, the poses. You can see the, the medic there in the top right doing the salute. So this will be really fun. I think he's running it as almost a uh, not uh, not a unit based game, but more like um, like let's say um, one page rules quest or Necromunda or something. You, each player will only control one hell diver, and each time they they call a guy down when he dies, they can bring down a different guy with a different uh, different loadout. So he's trying to be as true to the game as possible. So these guys were a lot of fun to paint, fairly quick to paint. I made the flags pretty simple because, again, I suck at freehanding. So I'll give you a close up on some more of the other ones just to, so you can see the variety here. Also had to make sure we got the captain on board of your, uh, your battleship that stands there next to the map and tells you what to do. And now as for accessories or add-ons, if you will, no game of Helldivers would be complete without all kinds of hell pots. So the, uh, let's see what I've got here, the seven are just examples. Um, John had me paint up, I, I think it was close to 20 or 25 of those uh, little templates to use for locations where a hell pod crashes down. So what I just put up here was an example of each of the type of uh, pieces you could put on top of the Hellpot templates. You got the missile launcher, the Gatling gun, the machine gun. There wasn't an auto cannon, John. No auto cannon. How are they going to take out some of the bigger things? Anyways, there's a lot more of that where those came from. And of course, it's absolutely essential. Any game of Helldivers has to have lots and lots of dead Hell divers. I think there are about 25 of these here. At least you'll have a lot of dead ones if you play like me. I tend to burn through stuff pretty fast. I'm not very good at that, but that's okay. So tried to do a mix up. I didn't want to spend too much uh, time on these because I mean, they're dead tokens. So gave them enough detail so they fit in, put some of the orange armor guys in there. Now that I look back on it, I didn't paint any living ones with orange armor, which is kind of odd because when I play, I play with the orange armor. But there you are, folks. There is a Helldivers army. You could run that in one-page rules for Robot Legions and either Human Defense Force or Battle Brothers. But uh, I'm really excited to hear how it went with John's demo at the convention, and I hope to have him in the kingdom to play us a game, uh, play a game for us, use your words, using one-page rules and uh, his special scenario. So we'll see how it works out. Look for that at some point on the channel. So I hope you enjoyed that. Until the next time, keep your dice on the table. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's good enough.